Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about over moisturising the hair. Now I've spoken a little bit about over moisturising the hair in my previous protein moisture balance video, but today I want to specifically talk about how to rebalance your hair when it is over moisturize. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing seven tips that help you rebalance your curls. These are tips that help me rebalance my curls and hopefully they'll help you too. So let's go ahead. So firstly I just want to talk a little bit about what over moisturize means and some of the signs and symptoms that you can look out for. So over moisturize basically just means you've used too many moisturizing products on your hair and moisturizing products include things like conditioners, so deep conditioner, leave-in conditioner, regular conditioner, and then curl creams and co-washes. So things that are made to add moisture to your hair. Most products that are marketed for curly hair are actually quite moisturizing products, but not all curly hair needs all the moisture, especially if your hair is naturally very soft or you've reached a healthy point in your hair journey, then your curls may not need as much moisture as they once did or as much moisture as other curl types. Types. Moisture overload usually happens gradually over a few wash days or it could happen over a few weeks or a few months depending on your hair type and how many moisturizing products you use. So by the time most people realize that their hair is over moisturized, it's usually quite over moisturized. But if you start to learn the signs and symptoms and what your hair needs, how much moisture your hair needs or doesn't need, then you're more able to kind of figure out how to maintain a balance in your hair. So some of the symptoms of moisture overload include your curls not holding as well as they usually do, so falling limp quite easily, your hair feeling overly soft, your hair losing elasticity, so you pull a curl and it doesn't bounce back as easily as it usually does. You may have also heard the term over-conditioned in the curly hair community, and over-moisturized and over-conditioned are essentially the same thing. Over-conditioned is technically more scientifically correct, but the reason that we say over-moisturize is because the products that over-moisturize our hair are marketed as moisturizing products, so creams, conditioners, leave-ins, you get the gist. So let's talk about how to rebalance your curls. Tip number one is to clarify. Now clarifying is the first tip that I would mention if there's anything going on with your hair. Clarifying helps remove any buildup, it helps give you a clean slate so you can really like get everything off your hair, start fresh and really understand what is going on with your hair. So if you have buildup from moisturizing products then clarifying should help to remove that buildup and help you rebalance your curls. So I will either use use a sulfate-free clarifying shampoo like this one from Naughty, this is Detox Dynamo, or I will use a sulfate shampoo like this simple gentle cleansing shampoo. Both of these are really good options. This literally costs like £3 and it's the size of my head so it's going to last you a long time. But they both contain ingredients that remove hard water buildup as well. But yeah, these are both great clarifying shampoos and I personally clarify probably like once a month, maybe once every couple of weeks. My second tip is to switch your co-wash to a foaming shampoo. If you are co-washing, deep conditioning and conditioning, you're essentially conditioning your hair three times in a row and then that is going to over moisturize your curls, weigh them down. It's just too much moisture for most hair types. While co-wash is predominantly for the scalp to cleanse the scalp, when you rinse it, it does go through your hair. So you are conditioning your hair for a third time essentially and if you're not deep conditioning, you're still conditioning your hair two times if you're co-washing. Some hair really likes it but others like my hair type do not. So I would recommend using a foaming shampoo. You can use a sulfate free one also known as a low poo. Most of the cleansers that I use are sulfate free shampoos. I'll just go through a few of my favorites now. So first up is this one that I've been using a lot recently and it is the Umberto Genie Neat Scalp Restore Anti Dandruff Shampoo. I really really like this one. I'm actually finding that my scalp is less itchy when using this and I'm needing to actually clarify it less often because it's really good at removing build up. So I'm going to continue using this. And then also one of my other favorites, the Naughty to the Rest shampoo. This one I've mentioned lots on my channel. It's just 
another budget-friendly good sulfate-free shampoo and another one that I really like is the Flora and Curl Super Fruit Shampoo. This is more clarifying than the last two but it is still sulfate-free but it does leave my scalp feeling kind of squeaky clean so if you don't like the squeaky queen squeaky queen so if you don't like the squeaky clean feeling then this probably isn't for you but it smells amazing and it gives me a really good cleanse my third tip is to skip the deep conditioner if your hair is feeling over moisturized that is a sign that you do not need to deep condition your hair even if the conditioner contains protein it still contains lots of moisturizing ingredients so it still has the potential to over moisturize your hair I used to use a deep conditioner that contained protein thinking that it was a protein treatment and I know that lots of you out there do the same but it was wrong and it was actually pushing my hair further into over moisturized territory and you will find that if your hair is getting over moisturized by using deep conditioner that your regular conditioner is enough which leads me on to my next point use minimal regular conditioner you probably don't need to use as much regular conditioner as you think you do there's this whole idea that we need to use so much more conditioner than we do shampoo Shampoo, but actually I usually get through shampoos quicker than I do conditioner these days because I realize that I actually don't need to use as much so I don't use a lot of regular conditioner I just make sure to add more water I always add more water before I add more conditioner and usually like the higher end conditioners you get away with using a lot less than with the like budget friendly high street ones but yeah like as a rule of thumb you probably don't need to use as much conditioner as you think you do and also you probably don't need to leave it on for that long so typically I put the conditioner on my hair leave it for a couple of minutes or I'll even just go straight into detangling and once I've detangled my hair I just rinse it straight out I don't leave it on my hair for five minutes like it says on the bottle even though probably overall like after detangling it has been in my hair for five minutes but yeah if you're finding that your curls are getting over moisturized have a look at your conditioner and try leaving it on for less time tip number five is to use less curl cream and leave-in conditioner so firstly you don't need to use leave-in conditioner and curl cream one or the other is enough and to be honest if your hair is naturally soft and very easily over moisturized you might even be able to skip the leave-in conditioner and curl cream altogether and just go straight to your other styling products when I use leave-in conditioner and curl cream I only use a very small amount and I focus it first on the underneath of my hair like the nape of my neck where it gets most knotty and then the ends of my hair and then I'll rake it through the rest of my hair and I don't really put any on the top part of my head because that's the part of my hair that's very soft and very easily over moisturized but go by how your hair feels on each wash day as to how much you use or whether you use it or not and also like if your hair is more dry and coarse on the top part of your head like the opposite to mine then where you focus your cream might be the top of your hair rather than the ends of your hair so yeah just go by your hair's knees and how your hair feels tip number six is to add protein to your routine now the products that you use will completely depend Depend on your preference and your hair type your hair may absolutely love shampoo and conditioner that contains protein and hate styling products that contains it or it might be the other way around or it may just crave protein in general and just want all the protein products so I typically use at least one or two protein products each wash day my hair used to really really crave protein but it doesn't actually crave as much protein as it used to these days so nowadays if my hair is over moisturized I will pull back on the moisturizing products and just use some protein products and maybe I'll do a protein treatment which takes me on to the final tip do a protein treatment now this is a final tip because I really think it should be the final thing that you try to rebalance your curls so after you've tried everything else if your curls are still feeling over moisturized and feeling that they lack in structure then I would suggest doing a protein treatment protein treatments are much stronger than protein containing products so they're gonna have more of an effect on your curls it's best to kind of just like ease your way into protein treatments I would say. My favorite protein treatment is a gelatin treatment and I've previously talked about that in my protein moisture balance video and I've also done a tutorial on Instagram showing how I do that. I've also recently been using the 
Botanica, the Mender treatment. So this is not as strong a treatment as a gelatin treatment, but it's really good if you don't want to do a DIY one. It does contain hydrolyzed collagen, which is the same as gelatin. So gelatin is part hydrolyzed collagen and also contains hydrolyzed egg protein. So this is not vegan or vegetarian. And if you want a vegan or vegetarian treatment, then you can try a rice water rinse or a beer rinse, which I've mentioned in my protein moisture balance video. And I'll put some links to some more information in the description bar below on that. So yeah, when it comes to protein treatments, I'd recommend doing it as a last step after using less moisturizing products over the next few wash days and after maybe introducing some protein products into your routine as well. So those are my tips on rebalancing your curls when they're over moisturized. I think that it's important to remember that protein moisture balance and all this is like an ongoing thing. So I think it's just really important to like pay attention to your hair's needs because your needs can change all the time as well. It can change due to the weather, the seasons changing, your hormones, the products you use. The ultimate place that you are aiming to get to is a point where you kind of understand and can identify when your hair is over moisturized or when it's needing more protein or more moisture. And that way you can kind of pinpoint it sooner and give it what it needs before it becomes over moisturized or before it goes into protein overload. So yeah, I really hope that you found these tips helpful. Let me know if you try the tips and they work for you in the comments below. And as always, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I will see you soon. Bye guys.